Well, hey guys, welcome to Mahoning Soul again. Thanks for joining me again. So I'm back out at the range. It's a beautiful, it's like six something right now. Uh, I just got done like an hour, hour and a half of fishing, some, some pan fish and stuff. It's been a great morning. So um, I wanted to do a follow up on the Java Man Elkhart that uh, I initially did an initial uh, review on uh, several months back. So uh, if you're not familiar with that, I will link this uh, either below or I'm going to link it near the end of the episode where there's like a little pop up box or whatever and you can see the initial review on this thing. So this is my Java Man Elkhart built by Greg Coffee. And uh, it's, uh, it's a bow that I'd been saving up for, for for quite a while. It's one of those uh, kind of beautiful uh, beautiful custom bows that, uh, I don't know, just kind of strikes your fancy because it's, it's just very unique looking. If you haven't seen one of these, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, um, it's got like a really unique limb profile. So I've got quilted, quilted maple uh, veneers and curly maple riser with a G10 in there and some... Uh, uh, a moose antler here and on the on the tips um, I do have again I go through all this in the, in the in the main one I do have like a really nice beautiful wrap on there but I did end up putting uh, this tubing over it it's kind of like bicycle tubing you can put bicycle tubing inner tube or uh, it's called uh, sure grip I believe you can get it through like three rivers and, and and you know things like that maybe even Amazon I don't know I'll, I'll try and leave some links for the stuff so anyway so uh, I, I've kind of got done tuning on this thing I've been shooting it for several months now and um, you know you guys wanted to know just the kind of specs on it so um, you know draw length is kind of a weird thing on this thing I was gonna get into poundage and all that stuff um, you know the way I measure draw length is you know I've got a I've got a um, an arrow that has a, a, a zip tie you know still with the tag end kind of uh, you know tied onto it or uh, not cut off of it rather so the way I the way I normally do it, so the zip tie would be here, when, and when I pull the arrow back, it hits against here. Okay, so I measure draw length from uh, what's comfortable for me, the way I've been shooting it, the way my clicker goes off, uh, just the way I can get the full full uh, uh, full draw, and then a little bit more expansion to get the clicker to go off. So on this bow, it's actually uh, the way I measure that from the crotch of the you know like the U, like the deepest part of the of the knock to basically the front side of the bow where that uh, piece of zip tie would hit it's just under 27 inches it's like 26 and three quarter or something like that now when i do the same thing on say something with a fuller grip like say like my bear grizzly i end up with uh just over 27 inches so somewhere around there okay um i know there's probably better more precise ways to measure it everybody kind of measures it maybe a little bit differently that's the way i measure it um so having said that it's about 43 pounds about at just again just under 26 uh, sorry just under 27 uh, 27 inches of draw so 43 27 let's say or a touch under um the arrows i've got right now tuned to it are uh, gold tip uh these are gold tip 500 spines they are 29 and a half inch long got a 100 grain brass and a 200 grain tip now this thing comes in at about 580 grains it's over it's like 13.4 or something like that grains per pound so you're going to say that's just ridiculous you know why not you know you don't need anything over 10 grains per pound blah 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 whatever fast forward through this i don't want to hear it i some, some bows i like faster arrows other ones i really don't care i don't my my world doesn't even exist beyond 20 yards so i don't care save it i don't if you're going to say it's too heavy i don't want to hear it it's just fine this is the way i like to shoot it um this is the uh uh the, the arc that i like to see this is the uh the, the flight of the arrow that i like to see just for instinctive shooting which is mostly what i do uh or gap instinctive or whatever you want to call it so that's just what's going to work for me i've tried uh you know maybe if i had like um uh, uh lighter spine arrows that i'm sorry not lighter spine arrows if i had some lighter weight arrows that would work with uh with what i got then yeah maybe maybe i could do that but i mean right now just the way this is tuning out um it's it's working out for me it's actually believe it or not it, it's kind of in between 600 spine and 500 spine i can make both of them work i really like this better it ends up about uh, 200 and uh, sometimes 200 it ends up about 24 uh, percent uh foc if you care about such stuff so right now i'm just running kind of five inch um five inch uh olive you know parabolic uh feathers i've gone down to three inch i've got four inch i'll probably settle on four inch it's not that big a deal um, i'm just using these as, as as practice arrows but all of these arrows that i'm about to talk about 
uh, that I just mentioned actually will 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 tune well out of this bow. They fly well out of this bow. So, um, yeah, I mean that's a lot of feather on there, but uh, I'll probably just stick with with four inch parabolics. But these are just what I happen to have on here. So, um, so yeah, so that's what it is. Brace height I actually increased. Brace height last time I talked to you guys, brace height was about seven inch. I had it on the low end. Uh, I actually have it at, at seven and a half right now. So seven and a half inch. Um, it seems to tune out really well there. It seems to tune out really well with these uh, string puffs that I got. Uh, just another uh, uh, little bit of information about that. Uh, if you watch my Tolki Pika video, maybe I'll link that one too. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know how many I can link on here before YouTube says no. But um, if you watch that, in that one, I did, um, uh, I did a video where I changed the string puffs on there from you know what came on there, the the spiders, the little spider. Uh, 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 not the like the rubberized ones kind of thing to uh to paracord um yeah par yeah i think it was paracord i changed it. anyway it took a lot of weight off the string and it changed the in, the entire spine range like completely and some of you guys said well no that can't happen well guess what it happened with this one too when i was actually in the in the process of tuning um i had some bigger puffs on here uh these are only about i'm gonna say they're about two maybe three inch across something like that not even uh, when I had them actually just even like, let's say from, from like this big, okay, to let's say like this big, that changed the spine. That way I was able to actually shoot 600 spine arrows because 500 was just a little too stiff because what was happening was it was that little bit of extra weight on the string that was slowing the string down that, uh, you know, 500s I couldn't get the tune because it wasn't dynamically putting enough energy into the arrow. So... For those, you know, this may be like not tuning one on one. Maybe this may be like advanced tuning. But when you move these up and down the string, okay, you will affect uh, how much weight is being accelerated, you know, toward the center. The more you move these toward the center, the more uh, the the the, the more um, you're gonna you're gonna dynamically uh, need to stiff. Uh, sorry, weaken the arrow, okay, because it's actually just you're trying to accelerate a mass closer to the center of where the string is. So if a, um, if a 500 spine arrow uh, worked before, then right now, if you do that, it's gonna be a little too stiff. 600 spine arrow is gonna be something that, that's gonna probably work for you a little bit better. I was, it's just, just amazing how much moving these up and down. I'm not even talking like uh, sound wise and vibration and stuff like that, uh, but just moving these up and down. So it's important, maybe I'll even do a different video on it, I don't know. But it's important that you know if you go and you tune uh, you know, with your string puffs and things like that, just moving them up and down a few inches, okay, is going to make a, a drastic difference. And definitely changing weight on there. If you go from beaver balls to otter fur to, to um, you know, spider, whatever, I, I don't know, the paracord um, is going to make a huge, huge difference. So if you switch from one to the other and you're like, well, why did my spine change? Why are my arrows flying wonky? Why does it sound different? That's probably why, okay? So, first rule of thumb obviously is to you know get the size that you want and then leave it at that size and then tune to uh, what feels good what sounds good what the bow feels like as far as uh, feedback to you and then after that start tuning your arrows because this is a you know it, it's a huge part of what's on the string anyway that's a whole other side sorry about that little squirrel um, you know, rabbit hole squirrel hole whatever it is kind of thing um, I'm shooting off the shelf I'm actually shooting off of um, this little bump on here that I made, and I'm actually gonna maybe, um, I, I'm working on something. I don't wanna say too much more about it. It could be nothing, it could be something, but I've got uh, just a little bit of a bump right here underneath this uh, this leather. And I've tried to leave a little bit of a, kind of a gap in between. Um, there's not much of one there, but uh, where the feather can kind of go by and not not get uh, hit and knocked, uh, so it get like any kind of like knock bounce or anything like that. So. Anyway, so that's kind of the tune on this bow, okay? So just under 27 inch, uh, like 43 in some pounds, uh, 500 spine, 29 and a half, 100 grain brass, 200 grain tip, 580 total. Um, and yeah, that's it, seven and a half inch brace. And I am using a clicker and some paracord sheath string puffs. So with that said, uh, I'm going to reset this angle over here, and then uh, we're just going to take a few shots. Maybe uh, you can come follow me on some of these targets. We're already at a 10-minute video, and if you've you know tuned in this long, I really appreciate it. So um, hang on. I'm going to reset all this stuff, and then uh, we'll do some shooting. 
Well, all right, guys, no joke. I, I really should have been recording this past one because I took like five shots as a practice, uh, just to kind of warm up kind of thing. So I would make a fool of myself on camera. And I mean, no joke, I, I, I got it in like, you know, the size of like, like, like this at 20 yards. One was flyer, but I mean, it was still within, within palm. So anyway, so that's 20 yard target down there. I'm going to take uh, five shots here. See if I can replicate that. The touch low and right. That was good. A little high. Broken knock. All right, so that's not too bad. Let's go down there, hang that up, and I'll show you. The first five I did were actually better. I mean, the first five I did were actually <laughs> clustered around something like that. So anyway, that was a flyer, that was me. But uh, it's not an indication of, of the bow or anything like that, so. Anyway, 20 yards, I got really got to concentrate. It's kind of a poke. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some random video here, shooting different targets, various stuff. There's like a little walking course back here. So I'm going to do that uh, just so you can get an idea more of like, I don't know, maybe how, how the bow sounds, uh, different different angles of uh, arrow flight, that kind of stuff. So uh, I did break a knock, like I said, on those first five that I did before I started recording. So it's, I'm not going to end up shooting. I didn't bring a spare knock with me. What I am going to do is I'm going to go over to the broadhead uh targets right back over there and i'm going to shoot some uh zwicky eskimos that i've got uh, tuned to this one 200 grains so we'll see how those fly all right guys so i've got zwicky eskimos here i know old school i kind of like it i love sharpening these things i mean i love sharpening these things um you know i love shooting them sharpening them shooting them sharpening them i wish i'd actually put it through an animal but hey um, so this is 200 grain. Uh, I've got uh, just the, the Zwicky, you know, with 100 grain um, steel adapter in there. So that they actually come in about 205 to 210 ish, something like that. So um, I'm going to take a few shots here on that on that target. I'm actually going to aim maybe just to the right of where the uh, it's tough to see there, but I'm just going to aim just to the right of just where the the, the shot out spot is, just so these don't go kind of zipping through. So. Um, we're about, I don't know, I'm going to be at about 15 yards or so. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer just to show that this thing flies nice. So let's see, here we go. There I am. I'm going to aim to the right a little bit. Okay, so that's right in the right in the kill zone. So I did one kind of in the in the tore out spot, one a little bit to the right of it. Let's go take a look. Well, I'll end up a little stacked on top of it, but I'm gonna shoot some more. I'm gonna shoot some more broadheads. It's important to keep tuning on those things. Um, I might take a few from a couple more from 15, uh, a couple more from 18, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so you got a good shot of me shooting. This is about 17. Yeah, uh, I, think it, I think it's good. Great coffee, you build a good bow. <clears throat> Can I see that? That was from about 17 yards. Yeah, that was from about 17 yards, so yeah. They're tuned, they're good, I'm happy with that. 
Again, I might do a little bit less fletching in the back or I might just keep it. I don't know, I'm really not sure. You know, I'm finding that uh, uh, I'm, I'm able to shoot, if you, could, if you got a good tuned overall setup, um, I'm finding that you're, I'm able to shoot a variety of uh, fletching configurations, um, you know, variety of broadheads, uh, you know, what have you. It, it's actually just, it's working out well. So anyway, I'm gonna re-switch back to uh, my fuel points here and we'll just go through the walking course. There's a walking course down that way. I think I've taken you on some previous uh, uh, excursions before. And we'll just do some uh, general target shooting. All right, before we do that, that's 25 yards. That's about as long as a poke as I can do. Not that I'd ever try and take a shot on an animal that, that far distance, but it's actually a long poke for me. Uh, I'm not much good past 20 yards, so so we'll see. I actually took a few shots. It actually It's actually flying pretty good. But I'm going to show you here. I'm going to set you up here. This is 25 right here. That's right in the center. Yeah, okay. I'll leave it at that. So that's 25 yards. I don't even normally shoot 25 yards in practice. So that's that. You know, so about, about yay big. Actually, right before I recorded again, I actually did a better group. And these are both in the white circle. You're just going to take my word for it. But that's me concentrating like a lot. I'm not going to say I'm usually that good at 25 yards. I'm really not. So uh, that's just a testament to uh, the flight of the arrow. And the bow is just really comfortable to hold and really comfortable to shoot. So, all right. I'm going to switch back to field all point. Right, this is just a 15-yard target. Nothing fancy. Just to give you a little closer-up view of uh, the bow. Actually, I'm standing at about 17, but... Not bad. All right, we're going through the jungle. <clears throat> Trying to get all this done before. Just a little high. I kind of saw the yellow there with the pin, um, the target pin, so. All right, there's a super scary bear right here. This is only like 10 yards. And then over there, well, the target's falling down, but we're gonna try and shoot for the middle. I'm gonna show you that I've been practicing shooting almost sideways too. You know, I try to hunt on the ground a lot and I've been practicing for shots that may present themselves like kind of like this rather than, you know, like totally upright. Uh, especially for like turkey hunting and stuff like that, I did practice that, so let's see, watch this. Ah, yeah, let's do that. Yep, right in the center. So if you've got a good tuned setup, you can probably shoot it this way, this way, this way. Um, and it's just training your mind to see the sight picture and do what it wants to do. But if the arrow is coming off without any weird kick and you're not counting it to kick one way or another, it's just kind of coming off the way it does, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna do pretty good. All right, so that's 20 yards. Again, that's kind of a poke for me. We'll see. Right in the center. So I know you shouldn't do it. I know you shouldn't do it in, in real real life, but it's always good to know what your arrows are gonna do when you're shooting through brush. Okay, I always try to practice that just in case. You know, so I know that if I do uh you know, not that I would purposely take one, but if I do happen to take one and there's brush in the way, I know how my arrows are gonna react. So there's not a ton of brush here, but I'm just gonna if you can kind of see, you know, through there. Um I think I might skim the top of these uh, this brush over here, so we'll see. It actually ended up flying right over it. I'm going to take a different angle with the brush and actually shoot through. All right, so I'm actually going to kneel down and shoot through the brush that way. You probably won't going to see me, but uh, 
again, it's kind of shooting through some stuff. Here we go. I had to aim low there. I think you saw some leaves move, but yeah, um, it seems to shoot for, shoot pretty well. I've actually, I actually practiced that a lot, trying to shoot through some, not necessarily branches, but like twigs, let's say, and some heavy brush. So uh, it doesn't tend to throw my arrow off course, but again, it's, again, it's, it's one of those, like in case it happens not, I'm going to try and shoot through something like that. All right. And there's a caribou that happened to wander in. He looks legal. I'm actually, now this is again, this is a shot when I go up there, I'm actually gonna try and shoot. This would be a quartering two shot, which again, no way you'd wanna do a quartering two shot, but I'm actually gonna try and put it right in front of the shoulder um, uh, for that shot. So there's like a little kind of black crease right where the shoulder meets the, you know, the, the leg meets the shoulder blade kind of thing. I think I'm just to the right of it just a little bit. I'm gonna take another shot. Okay, that hit right in the black spot there. So I'm dragging, these. I'm dragging, I'm walking with you just so you know I'm not like BSing you on some of these shots, but that was only about 12 yards, okay? So I'm not like making like super long, crazy shots. So here, so this was the first one. I was a little bit to the right and this is this black, crease or you know the area there I was shooting for uh the, for that second arrow again not a shot that you'd actually want to take on a live animal quartering too I don't care how heavy your setup is I you know it's one of those ethical things if you want to do it go ahead not me so all right so this is a 15 yard shot and a 25 yard shot 25 or one is kind of far that way I'm just going to kneel down here a lot of these target uh covers are kind of missing for some reason but someone's put a Looks like a paper plate up there with a black dot in the middle. So I'm going to shoot for that one. Then I'm going to shoot for the deer over there through the woods. I'm going to squat down. Hopefully I'm going to pull up my, my shorts here so we don't go all plumber on you. Nope. Blue to the right. Gonna try the deer at 25. I think it hit low underneath its belly. Left and right was good, but um, height wise, again, 25 is not good for me. I'm gonna try this one again here. Okay, that one was better. Gonna hang this up here. Yeah, so that first one here at 15, <clears throat> pretty far right. That was me. I think I was torquing it a little bit. Yeah, sorry, the flies are out. I'm soaked in, uh, soaked in. Uh, what do you call that? Bug spray. So that's that. This was the second one, which is a whole lot closer. It's only like, I don't know, inch, inch and a half off. So, and then over here. No, nope, I missed him straight under his belly. I was actually aiming right up here, but I was like way low. So again, my uh, my past 20, 20 yard game is not very good, but you know, I'll practice it to 25 every now and then, but I really don't stress about it. Some of you may, guys may disagree that uh, longer distances make the shorter ones chip shots. I don't agree. I think if you don't have a good tune setup, uh, if you're flying wonky sideways, your 10 yard game is going to be crappy. While if you keep practicing 25, 30, then the arrow stabilizes by that time. And it's going to kind of lob itself in where it's going to lob itself in. You're going to have a certain level of accuracy, but, uh, if you don't concentrate on the close up game and you're coming off sideways and not tuned, that's going to be worse for you. So my opinion, you can All disagree. Right, so there's another, I don't know if that's a sorry excuse for bear or like a, kind of stout coyote i don't know but there's a target over there again i'm going to kind of shoot kind of sort of through a brush yep 
And guys, by the way, I'm actually shooting good today. I'm not trying to brag when I say yep like that. Um, sometimes we all have off days. Today is not an off day, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be happy about it. I'm gonna be proud of it. But yeah, that's a nice shot there. It was uh, 13, 14, maybe 15 yards actually. Yeah. All right. On to the next. All right, these will be the last two. There's a, a caribou again, the same caribou, and uh, oh, same picture anyway, and a bedded, a bedded deer. I'm gonna take this one squatting down too. I kind of like shooting this way. You gotta clear some limb, some limb clearance here. If you notice, I don't know if you notice here, my bottom limbs are actually hitting this stuff. If I do this, this is hitting. So I'm gonna try and employ that sideways cant, really sideways cant like we talked about and see, see how I do. I'm almost, I'm almost horizontal here. Here's the one as well, this one's for the deer. A little far to the left. We'll do the caribou this time. Whoa, that one sucked. That one hit my arm. Told you, I think I jinxed myself when I was that I was in a good day. Back to the deer. There we go. That one went right where it needed to. Back to the caribou. Let's see, my last arrow. Yep, there we go. That's where that first one should have gone. <laughs> you notice I was holding it pretty much sideways. So that was a good example of uh, kind of sitting in brush and why you might want to practice shooting sideways. So this was my first one on the deer, pretty far back. This one's perfect. This one was an abomination. That one was perfect. So anyway, there you have it. I'm going to put the camera back up here. So. That's the, you know, I'm gonna go like this, kind of into the sun. There we go. So anyway, so that's the wrap up for the Java Man L cart. I mean, it's just, once you get them tuned, any bow tuned, um, then it's just a matter of uh, shooting with it, practicing with it, getting comfortable with it, having confidence with it. So yeah, not a bad piece of, uh, not a bad piece of wood, huh? Pretty damn cool. You know, I was kind of worried, not worried, but, uh, you know, in my previous videos, you've seen me talk about how I like shooting off of an elevated rest. Not able to do that, really, like a bare weather rest, just because of the sight window. But, you know, if you do get a little bit of bump right here, and I've created like a little bit of a bump and a little bit of channel maybe to clear, to have some clearance for feather, uh, feather clearance going through here, through that crease, man. The thing of beauty seven and a half inch brace i'm using it's working out just fine it's quiet um i'm not hitting my arm well sometimes i am just a little grazed but i do that with uh you know with my grizzly too which is like you know over eight inch brace height so anyway that's kind of like the quote unquote long-term review even though it's only like a few months a couple of few months but you guys have been wanting to know kind of a follow-up what do i have as far as tune uh what do i have as far as arrow setup and and specs and all that kind of stuff so that's it i mean it's obviously working when i'm when i'm on it's great when i'm not on i'm i'm hitting the grass but it has nothing to do with the bow so uh definitely go check out java man archery um greg's amazing guy great bowyer super quality just beautiful stuff he just puts out great great stuff so um I'm really, really enjoying shooting this bow. I'm really glad I bought it. I have no, no regrets whatsoever. And, uh, you know, it's as accurate as, as, as I can possibly be. So sorry, this video ended up being so long. It's a long video. So if you're still stuck with me, I really appreciate it. I'm going to leave uh, some affiliate links below like I normally do. If you want to support the channel, uh, anything bow hunting soul related, uh, greatly appreciate it. If you hit click on any of that stuff, you go to Amazon. And if you go through my links and buy anything, I get a few pennies back for your purchases doesn't even have to be the things i link so uh that's greatly appreciated uh one thing i do definitely want to ask you guys to do is listen to the podcast uh we're growing 
Um, but, uh, you know, again, I don't advertise for anything other than asking you guys here. So listen to the podcast and please leave a rating and uh, which is hugely, hugely important and share it. Tell, tell someone, Hey, this guy is interesting. Or if you don't, well then don't, I, you know, whatever it's up to you, but, um, thank you for listening. I really want to hear your comments on uh, this bow on other bows on anything else hunting related bow hunting related i don't care i just like talking about it so anyway thanks for tuning in and i'll talk to you guys next time